Well, and welcome. I call to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, May 16th, 2022. I am the Select Board Chair Leonard Diggins, and I will now confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the, in the affirmative. Um, Diana Hahn? Yes, thank you. John Hurd? Yes. Steve DeCourcy? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapterlane? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Meyer is participating, but not as a panelist. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with an act signed into law on February 15, 2022, that extends certain COVID-19 measures. The act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is on the town's website and referenced with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as there is reasonable public access that allows the public to follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom. It is being recorded and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons, excuse me, persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on APMI, ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the notice agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. We have a lot on deck for the 75 minute meeting, but before we do so, let's take a moment to acknowledge the passing of Lieutenant Danny Kelly III, a lifelong Arlington dedicated member of the Arlington Police Department for over 30 years. As we think of Lieutenant Kelly, let us also acknowledge the awful events of this past weekend in our country. Let us try to temper our own potentially negative responses to these actors of hate, hatred and violence violence so that we can act constructively and just demonstrate that love really is stronger than hate, that we have much in common with each other, and that our differences and our diversity are sources of strength and resilience. I now turn to the second item on the agenda. Oh, and I lost that window. <laughs> Hold on a second, please, sorry. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Uh, so the second item is the request for a temporary parking exemption for Arlington High senior prom um, buses. And, and so uh, we have a Mr. Steve Angelo listed. He may not be here because uh, when uh, I was putting the agenda together, uh, I also notified um, Officer Rateau uh, about uh, the need to be here. And he said that we had essentially approved uh, a very similar request fee for the junior prom being, and that he, he really didn't feel that it was necessary for him be, to be here to approve it. It would not only save us some time, but also save the town um, some money. Being, so uh, I was fine with that. So, so it is a approval item and I will, uh, you know what, I I'm just going to ask me for approval. People to raise your hands or something, just, uh, Mr. Helms? Okay. I think uh, second Mr. Hurd's motion. Okay, great. So um, any comments, questions for anyone? Okay, great. So on a motion approved by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. Helms, Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmut? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. And so now we're on to the consent agenda on that. And we have minutes of the May 2nd, 2022 meeting and a request for, a request, uh, for the annual Greek festival on June 10th, 11th and 12th. Uh, and that includes a three day special one day beer and license, beer and wine license and a one way designation of Appleton Place from Mass Ave to Burton Street. And next being uh, for approval, beer garden at Jason Russell House on Saturdays um, from June through September 2022 by um, Brian Burke. 
the owner and president of Burke's Brewing Company. And so I'm not anticipating that anyone will be here, you know, since they're on the consent agenda. Uh, uh, so um, once again, I mean, I'll just take. Can I, um, Mr. Chair, move approval? And I do see Mr. Burke is here. Okay, great. Thank you. You know, so um, we can bring Mr. Burke on if he wants to say anything. You know, Mr. 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 Chatelain. All right, I just invited him to join the meeting if he chooses to. Here he comes. Mr. Chair, while we wait, I'm happy to second Ms. Mahan's motion. Thank you. Mr. So streamlined tonight. <laughs> you know, I can see you all just fine. You know, uh, Mr. Burke. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for being here. You know, anything you want to tell us about the beer garden this year? Yeah, I just, um, you know, I, I prefaced it in, in the cover letter, my application. You know, we did this trial beer garden in uh, September of last year. Uh, we did four Saturday afternoons. We were blessed with four perfect 70 degree days. And uh, we had a wonderful turnout. We had a lot of folks from the neighborhood walk down. We had a lot of bicyclists come off the Minuteman Trail. Um, Overall, we just had a really nice um, event. We had really great feedback from everybody. And uh, we're really thankful that the Arlington Historical Society asked us to come back and, and do an extended run, so. Great, yes, I mean, um, people have been asking me about it already. I mean, so um, any other comments, questions from my colleagues? Okay, I think we're all set. So I, mean, I hope, I think this was gonna go well. Me, so I'm going to wish you a, a really great summer. And uh, so uh, with that, Ms. Uh, on uh, motion of approval um, for the consent agenda by Ms. Mahan and a second by Mr. Helmuth, Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurt. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Dickens. Yes. Jan, let's vote. Great. Thanks. And, uh, so moving on to Item number six, the license and permits. We have um, for approval, Szechuan Dumpling, 1360 Mass Ave with Lian Chen. Uh, this is a common victual victualler license and a wanted malt license. And um, is- Ms. Chen is here. Hello? Mr. Chairman, someone uh, named Russell Chin is also raising their hand. I'm gonna promote them in okay. case they're part of the application package. Yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I was holding back on, on the, uh, a title on this one because I really wasn't sure the pronouns. And I gotta tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm getting more and more into, I'm just kinda like, let me make sure I know the pronouns and let me make sure I know how you wanna be addressed before I start saying anything to anyone, you know? So are we still waiting? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Let's see here. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I um so is this um Ms. or Mrs. Chen? Yes. Okay. Which one do you prefer? That's okay. You know, so um anything you want to tell us about um your um such one's dumpling that we don't know already. Like it's a really good place to eat. Great dumplings, great atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, we made really good dumplings. What can everybody come? Okay, you know, so, well, we, um, Mimi, Mimi's a wonderful person. She kind of alerted me to the fact you know, about three years ago that this was gonna happen. And, um, and so I'm, I'm glad to see that instead of such one dumpling closing down, it's transferring um, license, you know, so. Um, any of uh, my colleagues um, have any questions, comments, motions? Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Mr. Mr. Helmuth. I, I'd like to know if the soup dumplings will remain on the menu. 
I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> Someone didn't read the menu because they, 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 they <laughs> you know what? That that's on me. I will find out. And I yeah. will all right. It's like, it's like well, no, their their favorite dish, and I'm I'm delighted as you are um, that the restaurant is continuing. So thank you. And, and now that you're talking, anything else you want to say? I'm good. Okay. Just like just move approval. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank. That's what I was getting at. So thank it. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Any questions, comments? Anyone? All right. Great. So. Yes, um, so a uh, uh, motion to approve by Mr. Helmuth and a second by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Chen and Ms. Fultz? Thank you, Ms. Chen. <laughs> so next on the agenda is uh, approval for outdoor restaurant and Retail permit application, uh, the Heights Pub. I don't have a name associated with this one. I see Mr. O'Rourke is here, yeah. uh, so I will promote him if that's okay with the chair. Sure, thank you. Tell us to work. I see the microphone still isn't still in mute mode. Okay, how about now? Yes, can hear you now, Mr. O'Rourke. Thanks okay. for joining us. Hey now, so anything you want to tell us about your um, application for an outdoor permit? No, I'm just looking to offer outdoor dining uh, for the guests and um, it's very popular at my other uh, restaurant first house pub in Winchester so I'd like to bring that to Arlington Heights well thank you very much I mean, so any questions comments motions from my approval. colleagues uh, uh, so Mrs. Mahan okay. approval and and Mr. DeCourcy I saw your hand yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a question for Mr. O'Rourke. Um, I, I see in his application, the plan has five tables listed. The memo from Ms. Carter identifies five tables, but in the permit application, it says six tables. And, and so I, I just want to clarify what we're approving uh, or what he's re requesting from us. And also, if you could comment on the timing of uh, I think he wants to put in a, some flooring to, to or, or some temporary structure to bring the tables up to the level of the sidewalk. And Ms. Cotter had suggested that maybe we approve the outdoor seating first and then approve the, the structure later because there might be more approvals. But if, if he could answer those two questions, that, that would uh, just be helpful on the scope of the application. Great. Thank you, Mr. Wark. Yeah, so one of the tables at the end uh, could either be a four top, six top. Um, it's two tables together. So that's, that might be where the confusion is on that. And uh, as for the flooring, we're going to hold off. It's a pretty level uh, area in front of the, the restaurant. Okay. And so, um, Mr. Chairman, I have yes. a follow up to that. Yes, um, just, just to clarify, um, it's I saw the five, the five, and the six, but I also saw in the application a request for seating for 24, but then in the application from the applicant, it's six tops. It, it's requesting 28 seats for outside. So are we 28 or 24? Mr. Rourke? Uh, I have two tables of six and three tables of four. So I think that's 24. Okay. That, no, that's fine. Your application has, um, where you kind of did the blueprints of, of the outside, it has um, four tops, six tables, 28. So we're, we're at 24. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Any, any other questions, comments? Okay. I'm not seeing any. So, um, so backing up to Mr. What Mr. DeCourcy um, referenced, um, Hold on a second. Um, did I get a second to this? I know that Ms. Mahan made a motion. Have I gotten a second? I know that I went to Mr. Okay. for a question. 
So can I get, okay, Mr. Hurd, thank you. And um, so, uh, so Mr. Corsi, um, or maybe this is Mr. Mizabahan. And so do we need to amend the motion on this? Cause we, your motion Ms. Mahan, we may, may imply, maybe imply that we were gonna do everything. I mean, and the conversation now makes me think that we aren't doing the flooring. I mean, we're just gonna do the tables. I mean, so do you feel Ms. Mahan that we need to amend the motion or? Um, no, no, I'm, I'm fine with that. It's, it, if he had said that it was gonna be 28 seating, which is different than the actual three page application, um, then I would have wanted to further clarify that, but he said he's committed to what he put in, in the application from the town, which is 24. So thank okay. you. Great, and so I think we're all set here. And so on a motion for approval from Ms. Mahine and a second for Mr. Hart, Mr. Heim. Um, Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Dickens. Yes. Mr. Nanis spoke. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warwick. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. So, uh, item number eight for approval, another victualler license in, and, okay, I'm going to give this a try. Um, restaurant, it, um, and we have Roshan Dangal and Amit Basnet. Roshan Dangal is here. If the town manager is taking care of that. So, okay, we just have one. Yeah. Okay, Hi. Hi. And this is Mr. Dangal. No, this is Dipendra Karki. I'm the manager. Dangol is uh, also here. If you want to talk to him, or I can talk to you. Well, I'm fine with the manager if the, if the owner does want to say something. That's fine. So, okay. so first off, how do you pronounce the name of the restaurant? Makalu. M A K A L U, like a mountain Makalu. Oh, you know, I was seen as an I. I wasn't seen as an L. Okay, you know, so M A K A L U. Okay, gotcha. Now I had an eye there. You know, maybe it's just my bad vision. Okay, you know, uh, 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 it makes it easier to pronounce. You know, so, so great. You know, so, um, well, uh, we really appreciate you um, willing to do Thank business in, in Arlington, but let me open it up to my colleagues first I mean, for question, comments, possible motion. Sure. Move approval. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hurt. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Any questions, comments? Um, my colleagues? Yeah, so, well, um, I'm excited about this. It, um, Nepalese. It, uh, uh, and we used to have another Nepalese place. In, yeah, got in a spice. Yes, yes, exactly. It, uh, um, really good food. It, uh, uh, and, and so um, I missed it when they when they left. So um, it's, a, it's a good spot for me. I'm in East Arlington and I uh, walk uh, around that area a lot, so so I'm looking forward to it. You know, so uh, so best of luck to you. On, Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So so um, on a motion to approve by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. Corsi. Mr. Hein. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes. My apologies, Mr. Mahan. Thank you so much. Unanimous vote. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so appreciate it. Uh, welcome. And uh, so okay, so now we are um, at items nine and ten. Um, and I had initially put water rates at the bottom just in case we were me running low on time. I wanted to a lot make sure that we had plenty of time to discuss me the town manager, um, the interim um, town manager uh, item. Uh, but if my colleagues don't mind, and if Mr. Rademacher is here, I mean, um, I'm happy to take that now. And then uh, Mr. Rad Rademacher can leave if he'd like, I mean, and then we can spend the rest of the time that we have um, discussing town manager. So how do we feel about this, Mr. Manager? Is Mr. Rock oh, he here he comes in, great. You know, so um, thank you, uh, Mr. Rademacher. And, and so Mr. Manager, I, I imagine you're gonna wanna lead off the discussion on this. 
Yes, I will. I'll give a very brief introductory remarks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, so I think as the board is now well aware, this will be the third year that we are rolling off the MWRA debt shift, which is the program or the statutory allowance that the town has used for many, many years now to carry a portion of water sewer debt on the tax rate. Again, I'm saying this more for the public than for the board. Um, the board made a decision several years ago in light of debt uh, rolling onto the tax rate from the high school and the Minuteman project and the Gibbs construction to begin to roll off that water sewer related debt so that we could have some tax rate stabilization or mitigation with the understanding that water rates would need to be increased in a corresponding amount in order to collect the revenue attributable to the amount that had been paid for by that water sewer debt shift. So the prior two fiscal years, we did two tranche in, uh, tranches of that um, debt shift reduction. This is the third and final year. The reason we did it in three years is so that we were both not uh, creating a giant ebb and flow in the tax rate and also to avoid a water sewer rate shock. So we try to do it in three years. This is the third and final year. So you'll see that the percentages are larger than what we would normally ask for, for a water sewer rate increase. Uh, but that is the basis for what we're asking the board to vote on tonight. I think what I would ask Mr. Rademacher to do is talk a little bit more in depth about the water sewer system itself and what is driving the costs not associated with the MWRA debt shift um, to describe that portion of the rate increase. Thank you, Mr. Rademacher. Sure, thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, sure. I mean, the, the 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 major drivers of our of our rates are the MWRA assessment. Um, it's about fifteen million of our twenty plus million dollar budget, um, in addition to capital costs and um, salaries and wages and typical operating expenses. But the um, aside from removing the debt shift, it's a fairly standard um, increase with the budget from year to year. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rademacher. And uh, so, so um, you know, on this one, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna go down the line just to give everyone a chance to, to, to speak to it if they want. You don't have to, you know, so I am going to start with Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll move approval. Um, I think we've, in the past few years, talked ad, ad nauseum about the, the debt shift. So we, we've all, we're all on record on, in supporting what we've done here. And I think it's been successful in helping to alleviate some of the tax burdens that we're seeing on the tax bills. And I, I think people appreciate that. So happy to support this. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. And so um, uh, next, Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second Mr. Hurd's uh, motion. And also um, just put, I want to thank Mr. Rademacher. I did, had a couple of questions for him and the town manager earlier today and he got right back to me. And just again, at the, at the risk of talking about this a little bit further, but we did the recommendation is 11.31% rate increase on water and 11.14% on sewer. If the debt shift wasn't included, uh, Mr. Rademacher tells me, that the increase would have averaged 4.2%. So the bulk of this increase is, is because of this these costs coming off the real estate tax bills and coming over to rates and, and really where they belong to be paid by the ratepayers. But I think that distinction is, is important because that amount is being paid whether it's on the on the tax bills or whether it's in rates. So rates in, in total are, are the request is to increase them just a little over 4%. Thank you for that elucidation, Mr. DeCourcy. And um, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you, Mr. DeCourcy, for that. Uh, I think I agree it's really important to have clarity on, on what the, the constituents of that rate increase. Um, and I have a question through you, Mr. Chair, to perhaps the manager uh, as to how the town will, what the town's plans are for explaining and communicating that to the residents so that you know, they fully understand what's going on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, through you to Mr. Helmuth. So I, I might uh, sort of 
try to answer a little bit and then defer to Mr. Rademacher, but I know we have put language together describing this that we've had on the town website uh, and that we've reshared each year as we have uh, asked the board to make this move. Um, Mr. Rademacher, do you recall, have we put it on sort of a buck slip in the water bills, uh, in the next water bill as well, or have we just used uh, electronic communication? We have in the past used um, information on the water bill. We, the, the next water bill, um, I'm trying to remember if the next water bill will actually have these increases. It is on our website. It's been on the website for three years, each year of the shift. And um, we do typically put a, a notice on the bill, if not a, um, some kind of notice with it. Yeah, explain, explaining the, the reasons. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, this is this is a suggestion. Um, given that this is like the first, the third and final year that we're doing this, um, you know, I might suggest at least to consider that um, if it's practical, um, a buck slip might not be a bad idea. Just to say, okay, this is it. You know, we're we're done. And, and I think it really is valuable to point out that the actual infrastructure costs is four percent. You know, rated that, that that's what it, what this is, and the rest of this is what you are already paying, but to somewhere else. Um, you know, just, just I'm thinking particularly since we are heading into you know very very possibly an override campaign next year that might be a proactive piece of communication we could do just so people understand what we're doing and they don't feel like this is another cost that's ballooning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, happy to support this. Thank you, Mr. Helmus. Ms. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this question may be apples and oranges, so I apologize. Um, I know, I believe last year, um, when we were setting the rates that um, the MWRA had lower assessments in light of the fact of COVID and, and, and financial struggles. And if I say anything that's incorrect, please, um, I'm guessing through the chair to Mr. Rademacher. Um, and uh, I know last year, we have it at 920 and 1078, and this year we have it at 11.31 and 11.14. So my question is um, sort of two part, is the MWRA was last year a one-time thing where they uh, lowered their assessment to Arlington in light of COVID and financial struggles. Um, and if the answer, or is that reflected again this year? If the answer is yes, it was only last year, uh, is part of the reason um, because I know we started out uh, back in 21, at like eight or nine dollars, um, or in nine and ten dollars, uh, respectively. So I'm just wondering this number this year is it MWRA making it up for last year when they did give us some relief, or is it a natural progression? Um, oh, yeah, sure. Mr. Yeah. Yes. So there was a one there was a one time um, relief by the MWRA. Typically, their increases to us are in the three or four percent range on the assessments, and they they limited it to one percent um, last year uh, to help communities um, struggling with the finances of COVID. But uh, that was like I said a one time thing, and they're back now to a typical three percent increase. So it's not a plain catch up for the 1% last year. It's they're back to their normal custom and practice course of business of three to 4%. And it sounds like we're close to the three. Correct. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Great. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. And um, so I'm debating whether I'm going to ask the question or not. Um, I'm not. You know, so I'm just going to say that I'm happy to see the um, once again as last year. I like to, I like seeing the gradation of um, increases in the rates based on the amount of water usage. But actually, I am going to ask a question. It's a different question. Up to my uh, so um, as the rates increase, are those increases determined by us, or or is there a formula that? comes from some other source that determines you know, how much it goes up. I mean, like once you cross the 16 um, cubic foot, or is it 100 cubic feet um, threshold? So the, the um, 
if, 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 you, if I may, uh, the tier structure was developed through help with the consultant about five to seven years ago. The, the three different tiers, the zero to 15 CCF, the 15 to 30 and the 30 to um, 45, although um, we, we changed, yeah, right. Those, those different tiers were, were helped through a consultant to mimic um, other communities as well as efforts for water conservation. Uh, the actual setting of the rates for each of those tiers is done by my office uh, based on projected uh, expenses and the revenues we'll need to um, cover those expenses. Gotcha. Thank you. Because I mean, the, the, the only people that have said anything to me complaining about the, the rates are those who feel that, well, in the summertime when they want to water their lawn, I mean, they're going to get charged more. And, and I mean, I have my feelings about that, but this helps me understand at least how the differences are, are derived. So that's it, you know, so um, I don't see any other questions. I mean, so on a motion to approve by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. Corsi, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCorsi. Yes. Mr. Hellman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'll definitely vote yes. I should have asked this before. Is this a public hearing where we're setting the water rates or no? Um, I don't have it on the agenda as a hearing. Okay. But if in the okay. past it has been, I mean, um, I mean, we could certainly back out and see if there are any questions you know, um, from um, people in, um, in the participants list. I mean, so is that people's recollection that these have been hearings? Um, Mr. Mr. Chatelain? I don't have that particular recollection, but I would defer to Ms. Mahan for the longer institutional. I think that's for the tax rate in December. I don't recall for the water bill. Okay, that's fine. And, and, and I don't see anybody's hands raised anyway. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. No, no problem. So thanks for, for looking out for that. Appreciate it. And uh, so, um, all right. And Mr. Dickens. Thank you. Yes. And, uh, so Unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rodham out here. And, Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, you can hang around if you want, but free yeah. to go to. All right. <laughs> you know, so, so, um, so now um, we go to um, discussion about uh, the next phase in, in our search for a uh, town manager or, or how we deal uh, with things when our current town manager departs. I mean, so, um, At this point, I mean, I've been working with Mr. Corsi. I mean, you all have seen the memo I mean, from, from Mr. Heim. And, um, and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Corsi because uh, I think he'll provide all the introduction I provide I mean, in discussing I mean, his feelings about how we should move forward. And if I need to add anything, I will. I mean, so with that, Mr. Corsi. OK, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I want to thank Attorney Heim as well for the, the memorandum that he, he provided to us. At, at the end of last week. And so um, section 12B of the Town Manager Act controls the appointment of a successor to, to Mr. Chapdelaine upon uh, his leaving Arlington on, on June 17th. And we have gone through a process where we've uh, sought interest from, from individuals for the interim town manager position. And um, in, in looking at section 12B, um, talking to the chair and, and talking to Attorney Heim, uh, the feeling was that um, Mr. Pooler has been identified as, a, as an individual to, to serve beginning on June 18th, um, subject to, to negotiations uh, with him. And that period very well may go past September 15th, which would be 90 days from June 17th. And the Town Manager Act talks about an appointment for the balance of the unexpired term. And here, where there is so much term remaining in Mr. Chapdelaine's contract, there are some issues that I think we need to discuss with, with Mr. Pooler, and, and he, I'm sure he would like to discuss with us, um, because if, if we were to appoint him for the balance of the unexpired term, that would go to 2025. He does not um, plan on staying in Arlington through 2025. Um, however, th th there is a period of time that he would like to, to remain here and we want to respect that and, and try to work with him 
on that and um, have an opportunity to talk to him about that. And, and I think it's one of those things as, as we look through section 12B, given the timing that we, we face ourselves, the, the, the Town Manager Act has some limitations in terms of what we can do in terms of timing. And, and I think as we go forward, we may wanna think about a change to it for, for, for subsequent appointments. Um, but I think in the short term, it makes sense. We had a draft motion from Attorney Heim. I think it makes sense, um, and I'm gonna propose this as a motion, um, a motion to authorize the chair to enter negotiations with Sandy Pooler to serve as town manager pursuant to section 12B of the Town Manager Act. And I think those discussions and negotiations probably can, if, if, if there is approval this evening, start right away and we can come back as a board and, um, and, and um, have a subsequent vote, but, but have a better conversation with Mr. Pooler about uh, his concerns and his timing. And I, and I wanna thank him uh, for being candid um, in terms of what his intentions are. I think that's really gonna help the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. And so we have a motion and um, so- Second. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, any questions, comments from colleagues? Um, just a question after Mr. Helmuth, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I, I really appreciate your, your Mr. DeCourcy's work on this. Um, I'm happy to support the motion. I think it's, it's, it's a logical next step. Um, and I look forward to seeing, uh, you know, to, to learning more about, um, about timing, um, suggestions that Mr. Pooler has and that we have and, you know, to see what, see what the, the best course of action could be. Um, I think needless to say, I would, you know, would suggest that we take this up as soon as possible in you know, our next meeting. And, and um, I'm sure that we'll make all due haste to do this given given uh, the timeline. Thank you, Mr. Helmets. Ms. Mohan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> what I'm hearing is either the next meeting or the meeting after, uh, the board will discuss this. I assume it's not covered by executive session. Um, just uh, for your benefit, Mr. Chair and Mr. DeCourcy, who are our designees on this, um, my two top of my head questions would be one that Mr. DeCourcy has already touched on um, with the process starting. If we don't get it done in just about a year, um, in um, being mindful and respectful of Mr. Pooler's. Um, time here in Arlington, um, I agree we need to have a, a plan B or whatever kind of plan you want to call, to talk, call it afterwards. Um, and I think You're breaking what I'm hearing up. from Mr. DeCourcy is we should probably rather do that um, sooner than if and when the circumstances um, so I'm unstable. Like, yeah, you're, you're, so I think we, we've probably missed like the last three or four sentences. I mean, so. so How's that? Am I back? You seem to be back. I mean, so maybe you know, back up about, I mean, four or five sentences. You might repeat some things, but that'll be okay. Uh, no, I'm still unstable. I'll okay. skip. All right, but, but I think we have I think we have the gist of what uh, of what you're getting at me uh, for sure. Although I did have a question um, regarding the uh, your your statement about executive session, but but um, maybe I'll come back to you. Maybe you won't be unstable, or if not, then maybe Mr. Heim can help out. I see Mr. Heim's hand up now, and then I saw Mr. Helmet wanting to talk, so I'll come back to you, Mr. Helmet, right after Mr. Heim. Mr. Heim. Just wanted to uh, if Mrs. Mar could note for the record that the uh, Ms. Mahan signal was lost, just to make sure that the record is clear for uh, Mrs. Mahan was trying to make a point at I think seven twenty two p.m. So it looks like the signal stabilized, but it's just important to note for the record. Secondly, um, just in advance of any questions about this, to the extent that the board is engaging in strategy sessions for the purposes of conducting a contract negotiation with non-union personnel, you may go into executive session for that specific purpose. Um, can't go into executive exceptions generally, which may be what Ms. Mahan is saying, but if you are going to move forward and you want to have a strategy session for negotiation, you may go into executive session. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Heim. So that answered my question. Thank you. Thanks for raising that, Ms. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Helmuth? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. And just a follow up from uh, from Mr. Hyde. Uh, Mr. Hyde, do you feel like the, the motion that has been presented by Mr. DeCourcy would qualify for executive session under the conditions that you just outlined? As long, thank you, Mr. Helmet. Mr. Chair, may I? Yes. As long as the board is going into executive session to conduct a strategy session, it doesn't necessarily matter what Mr. DeCourcy's specific motion is right now. It's that when the agenda is posted, um, the purpose for that executive session has to be discreet and limited to uh, strategy sessions for contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And um, so, um, so I don't want to put you on the spot, Mr. Heim. I mean, so you can just say, I mean, I'll talk about this some other time. You know, is there anything you would like to say regarding, you know? Section 12 being in any, um, pop, well, anything that we could do, because it, it does seem pretty restrictive. I mean, um, and so uh, is it as restrictive as it looks? I mean, or, you know, are we as locked in as it looks, or do we have more flexibility than there seems to be there? So um, I want to be, thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to be candid with the board and the public in the sense that um, the way that the Manager Act reads really contemplates two scenarios. The scenario under 12A is really irrelevant. The Manager Act really contemplates this fealty to this idea of terms. Um, and an appointment pursuant to 12B is an appointment in the event of a vacancy, uh, which is essential, which is exactly what's happening here. Um, the board can't, um, neither, not, neither, someone can't be forced to work for the board and the board uh, isn't, limited entirely in the way that it um, conducts business. And it's not happy with a manager. It doesn't have to keep a manager on board for the purposes of filling section 12B of the town manager. Act. But the manager act read in its most literal form definitely contemplates this idea that, you know, you're gonna have a, a remainder of a term filled by the anybody appointed under that section. Now, in the past, um, my understanding is that there have been under slightly different circumstances, Mr. Chapdelaine's appointment as town manager after Mr. Sullivan's retirement. Mr. Sullivan was in the middle of a three-year contract. Mr. Chapdelaine was not appointed to finish that contract, but what was slightly different about that scenario is that to my understanding, Mr. Chapdelaine was hired after a process and was anticipated to serve for a full three years when that contract was entered. So, it is a little bit of a, a pickle uh, in terms of the way the town manager act reads and the way that it contemplates things. It's not maybe as flexible or as modern as um, I would like it to be. Um, but um, I think the right way forward is to understand that under any contract with any manager um, for any period of time, the board always reserves rights with respect to uh, giving notice for a manager and typically vice versa. So I, I'm not sure if that answers your question, yeah. but I, I think the, the Manager Act, if you read it in a more conservative way, uh, does contemplate the fealty to terms that is not super practical. Um, and um, the board has typically exercised its latitude in these situations, um, but through the consent and agreement of the people that they're working. I hope that I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does mean, and, and also what it, it does is it, it makes, what we think about doing going forward more transparent. And so I appreciate I mean, your explanation, I mean, especially in this, in this venue. So um, I'm not seeing any indications of more questions or comments. I mean, so on a motion in to um, potentially enter into um, negotiations with Mr. Pooler, I mean, um, to, um, Phil, or, or to step in, I mean, as town manager, um, and uh, from Mr. Horsey, and on a second from Mr. Hurd, and uh, Mr. Heim. Mr. DeCourcy, I'm sorry, Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Good. So, 7.30.
nicely done, folks. You know, so so I was a little bit concerned that we we were we're gonna have a hard time fitting the meeting in into an hour. I really appreciate you all, me, you know, me your willingness, me, to start a meeting 15 minutes early. I think me just having a slack makes for a less stressful meeting, and I'm all about stress reduction as least as much as possible. So I appreciate it. So we have some time for new business. Anyone has any? I know we kept it all because we thought we weren't going to have time for any, you know. Uh, I have one thing, but I don't know if I'm still unstable. No, 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 you're, you're fine. You know, all right, I'll, I'll make it real brief. If I could ask through you, Mr. Chair, or to you and the town manager, um, starting to get a lot of complaints in East Arlington ever since uh, Cambridge, East Cambridge basically eliminated um, parking along with the construction projects that are going on in Cambridge and on the Cambridge Somerville lines. The word has gotten out to lots of contractors with big trucks, which makes it difficult to get out of driveways to park on Boulevard, Lafayette, and um, Fairmont. I don't know how it is across the other way. So I don't know if, that, if that's something that can be looked into through the planning department or whatever to see if there's any kind of solution. But um, I've been down there quite a few times and it's um, difficult. I can get down because I'll drive through anything, but. Um, the, the word is definitely out because of the parking prohibition in um, East Cambridge on Mass Ave. Because um, I spoke to a couple of parkers, construction workers, um, and I was told that unofficially. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And so um, I'm not seeing any calls for it. Mr. Mr. Corsi? Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Given, given that we have a little time, I, I have a couple of short ones. First thing, I, I would like to wish a happy birthday to Jack Bowler, who is 90 years old today, former town employee, father of our Arlington High Athletic Director, John Bowler, and the Bowler family has been very active in the community, and I want to um, send, send greetings to, to, to Jack on his birthday. Um, the second thing, Mr. Chairman, is I had the pleasure last week of attending the Touchdown Awards Banquet um, for Arlington High School athletes, seniors, and, and, and teams, and the Ostrogen Award, which is the student uh, athlete, um, senior athlete, uh, one male, one female, Reed Malatesta won, and Grace Crossetti won. So congratulations to both of them. And I will just leave the guest speaker was Barbara Stevens, who was the former basketball coach at Bentley University. She is the winningest coach in Division II history, won over a thousand games. She gave a great talk to the students who were there about taking chances and learning from failure. And I just want to cite a quote that she had in the, the locker room because I thought it was really, uh, really well done about taking chances and not being afraid to fail and being uncomfortable. And, and, it, um, and she said, we had a quote in our locker room or sign in our locker room that said, there's no growth in the comfort zone and there's no comfort in the growth zone. And I, I thought that was a really well said to the group there. So um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, you're welcome. And that was inspiring. I certainly take that to heart. So thank you very much. You know, so, um, well, and I'm not seeing any other um, new business. I mean, I, mean, I certainly should. Mr. Shut Chair, I'd like to move to suspend and re-adjourn at the regular town meeting and that the adjournment of, final adjournment of our meeting will be concurrent with the final adjournment of regular town meeting. I can second. So, um, Mr. Hine? Sure. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmet? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Shannon's vote. See you guys soon. Great. See you soon, Mr. Chair. Bye bye. Take Thank care, you, everybody.